The Owl and the Pussycat is a 1970 romantic comedy that was directed by Herbert Ross, and it stars Barbara Streisand and George Siegel. The screenplay was written by Buck Henry, and it was based on a stage play by Bill Manoff. In the stage version, the would-be writer and would-be actress are the only characters in it. Though the race of the characters is not specified in the script of the play, in the original Broadway production that ran from 64 to 65, the owl was played by white actor Alan Alda and the Pussycat by a black actress-singer Diana Sands. Many subsequent productions followed this precedent set by the original play. The film version omitted the character's interracial relationship. The film centers on a repressed, pretentious, wannabe fiction writer named Felix, played by George Siegel, and a model-slash-prostitute named Doris, played by Barbara Streisand. These two, over the course of one night, have each other kicked out of their respective apartments. Despite the natural antagonism that results from this, a romantic relationship develops. But this relationship will only prosper if they mature and face up to some home truths about themselves. The movie is based on that two-character stage play, and despite attempts to open it up with other characters and different settings, it still feels like that. Its basic success comes down to whether Felix and Doris are funny and entertaining as characters. As it turns out, we find out they are. This is in great part because of the excellent work that's done by Siegel and Streisand. They work terrifically together as a bannering couple. They create interesting individual characters, and they both have great comedic timing. It's especially notable to see Streisand perform as such a fresh and lively performer in this comedy role. And as impressive as she is, Siegel's contribution is great too. He's terrific as Felix, making his character both obnoxious and pitiable at the same time. And he also has some extremely funny moments, especially when he does a frenzied impersonation of various television shows. He gradually transforms Felix from a dull personality to a disturbed and even manic person who needs Doris despite his initial disdain for her. You see, it's this creation of internal tension in Felix's personality that provides an ongoing interest beyond just the jokes. Look closely and you'll see the debut role of future adult film star Marilyn Chambers. She portrays Barney's girl. You see her billed in the final credits is Evelyn Lang. She was 18 and still in high school, and her dream was to make it big in mainstream films. But two years later, she was talked into starring in the X-rated movie Behind the Green Door. After that, though, no one wanted to hire her for mainstream films for many years. This is the first non-singing acting role for actress Barbara Streisand, and she hits the mark really well. Her comedy timing is really good. Between takes, she painted and studied painting. She had to wear special plastic gloves in order to protect her makeup manicure, reportedly because Streisand was such a fan of the modernist artist Frank Stella, the film's producer, Ray Stark, gave her an artist's smock embroidered with the name Stella on the front. The producer was hoping to cast Elizabeth Taylor for the part of Doris. The picture was originally announced to be a comedy star vehicle for married actors Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. But Burton initially rejected the project and he talked Liz Taylor into rejecting it too. I'm not really sure what they didn't like about it, but they decided to not get involved in the project. 
There were some pretty intense on-screen differences between the producer and Barbara Streisand. She insisted that she wanted to do this movie without singing any musical numbers, and she wanted to be able to carry this picture on its own without music. The producer felt like it would be nice to have some musical element involved in the picture, but Streisand wouldn't have any of it. The movie was filmed in offbeat locations in New York City. These included a bookstore on 5th Avenue, a cafeteria on 57th Street and 6th Avenue, the Club 45 on West 45th Street, the World Theater on 49th Street, and a pawn shop on 8th Avenue. There were some more tourist-worthy locations that were used, including the Lincoln Center, Central Park, and at that time, the new General Motors building. The movie was originally rated R in the United States in 1970, and then it was later recut and re-rated to PG in 1972 on a re-release. The original Source Plays USA's location was changed from San Francisco to Manhattan for the film's project. The screenwriter Buck Henry changed this story's locale to fit in with the star Barbara Streisand's image because of her speech pattern too, and also her association with the city in earlier films such as Funny Girl and Hello, Dolly. He says that a lot of the stuff in the screenplay was written for Barbara's rhythms and her speech patterns that probably any other actress would have trouble sounding good at. A line of dialogue where Barbara Streisand says the F word has been cut out of many of the DVD releases of the film. Those releases have the phrase, up yours, replacing the offensive expletive She was one of the first female stars to ever use this word in a major film, and it helped the movie earn an R rating upon its original release. Depending on which version you watch at home, you may not hear this phrase said. One of the great lines that Barbara's character of Doris has is her statement that she may be a prostitute, but she's not promiscuous. And in order to develop this character, They sent photographers out and hired them to take pictures of New York prostitutes so that they could formulate ideas for Doris's Lady of the Night character having to do with her dress and hairstyle. There was a scene shot where actress Barbara Streisand is seen topless. Streisand agreed on two conditions, the first being that only co-star George Siegel would be on the set and the second one being that she had the right to withdraw these shots from the picture if she wished. And that's what she ended up doing. She killed this topless footage, stating that she looked at the film and felt like it was too real. Being that it was a modern sexual comedy, the reality of this nudity hurt the comedy. She, at that point, decided to never do that again. While being faced with this first nude scene, She began to get cold feet before filming it. She told the director that she had goosebumps and that she was afraid they would show on the camera. While the director continued to coax her into doing the shot, George Siegel was just sitting there waiting in the bed, and he went ahead and took a nap. Finally, Streisand tossed her robe off and glided across the set. And shortly after, cut and print was shouted, and the director said, beautiful. But what did Streisand do? She demanded a retake. Now, those scenes that Barbara cut out of the film later turned up and got published in the November 1979 edition of the men's adult magazine, High Society. This prompted a $5 million lawsuit and an injunction from Streisand, who ended up winning the case in court. Years later, though, that scene would start popping up all over the internet. This film, upon its release, was an instant hit. It grossed about $24 million at the domestic box office, making it the 10th highest grossing film of 1970. If you've never seen this, take a look at it. It's really funny and well done. 
I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.